I've just disembarked Virgin Voyages first cruise ship Scarlet Lady and the cruise wasn't what I expected at all. I have to admit I went into this cruise with low expectations. I toured the ship in early 2020 and I didn't fall in love with the ship in the way that I hoped I would. If you'd asked me then if I'd ever cruise with Virgin, I would have said probably no, not unless something big changed and spoiler alert, big things have changed. A lot has happened since the start of 2020 and when I saw a three night cruise for less than £500, which is $700, I knew I had to get on board and try it out for myself. I ended up doing things and seeing things that I've never seen on a cruise before and I doubt I will ever see on a cruise again. My original review was very much a review of the ship and I was hoping that Virgin Voyages would have a few things up their sleeve that would make me overlook the fact that the pool was and still is absolutely tiny and the fact that there's not a single drawer in any of the cabins. I was really excited to see other people I knew cruising on the ship and even big companies like Cruise Critics saying that although they were confused about the ship before, they were having a great time on board. So I hoped that my experience would be the same. Virgin Voyages always wanted to be different and they even have a tattoo parlour on board which was quite popular. Most cruise lines will have seats on the balcony, Virgin have hammocks, most cruise lines have little drinks in the minibar, Virgin have adult toys. And in most of the world, soap is white but on a Virgin cruise, the soap is black. Our cruise got off to a bit of a frustrating start trying to use the Virgin Voyages app. The app worked well for all of the embarkation info, but when it came to dining, it would do all kinds of strange things. I would book dinner and it would only stick for half the passengers. I didn't have permission to book dinner for myself. I didn't have permission to cancel dinner and I never managed to get it to work. I did talk to the sailor services as they are called and they booked my restaurants for me before I went on the cruise. And I'm so glad that I persevered with that because by the time we got onto the cruise loads of the restaurants were fully booked for dinner and I would have been really annoyed if I missed out just because I couldn't book these meals. Fingers crossed they sort that one out soon because it will make a big difference. I have to admit I was pretty nervous when I boarded this cruise because I had no idea what to expect. I knew that Virgin didn't have traditional kind of cruise entertainment. There were things on the daily schedule like erotic evaluations so I was a little bit scared. Embarkation took us just over two hours because we had to have COVID tests done. Everybody on the cruise was fully vaccinated and tested. The testing was okay. It definitely could have been improved, but I think we're all pretty used to it at this point. Before we boarded the ship, we were given our C bands. This is a C band and this acts as your cruise card. You don't get a cruise card at all. This is the only thing you have and you use this to get into your room. You use this to pay for drinks. Some people I was cruising with had their names on theirs. Mine is a generic one and it says make a splash, which I thought was quite funny given the size of the swimming pool, but I did really like this wristband and it is made from recycled ocean plastic. So it's also good for the environment. When I got on board, I instantly recognized the spaces. We came into this area that's called the roundabout, which is basically an atrium. Off to the side, you'll find a draft beer house and various other bars where you can get a drink. Just to the side of the roundabout, you will find an ice cream parlor, which is called Lick Me Till Ice Cream. Some people think the naming is funny. Some people think it's in bad taste, but either way, the ice cream was amazing and they had vegan options too. On other cruise lines, I'm pretty sure that this would cost extra because this was so much better than the usual kind of soft scoop that you get by the pool. This was a proper ice cream parlor. On most cruise lines, the crew have really strict uniform and appearance guidelines. Everybody will be wearing the same thing and even things like makeup and hairstyles usually have to be approved. That was not the case on the Virgin Voyages cruise and I thought that that was brilliant. Virgin Voyages do still have uniforms and it's quite easy to see who is crew and who is a passenger, but the uniforms are just very casual. Most of the waiters would just be wearing a Virgin Voyages t-shirt, maybe a pair of jeans and some trainers or sneakers. You could still see who they were, but they looked like they were comfortable, which was really good. I thought it was so nice to see the crew that had visible tattoos, that had different makeup on, that had different hairstyles, that had things that they would never be allowed to on other cruise lines. A friend of mine, Lucy, works on board and she says that Virgin Voyages are the best cruise line that she's worked for. All of the crew get Wi-Fi for free. On most other cruise lines, they have to pay for Wi-Fi or go off inland to try and find it. And also the food, she says, is very good for the crew, which is great because I think happy crew make a happy ship. As soon as we got on board, 
record, there were announcements saying that we had to do our muster drill and that we should go and watch the video in our cabins and then we should go to our muster station. If you know me, you know I really don't like being late for things. So I was starting to panic a bit and thinking, ah, we have to go now. It was fine. They were doing the muster drill for quite a long time. We went into our room very quickly to watch the safety drill and we were greeted by the curtains opening and the lights coming on, which was very cool. We didn't have any of that the last time I was on board. We very quickly watched the safety drill, which was interesting. It wasn't a boring presentation. It was completely sung to you. I really wanted to try out the hammock to see how comfortable it was and to see if the bathroom was as small as I remembered, but we had to go on to our muster station. Our master station was in the Manor nightclub and we were only there for about 10 minutes when they showed us how to put on a life jacket, scanned our C-bands to say that we'd been there and then we went on with our cruise. The Manor is a very cool place. It is a nightclub that is split over two levels and we did an 80s themed exercise class here. Normally, if you do kind of an 80s themed exercise class, it might be a bit gimmicky with a bit of exercise thrown in. This was a proper exercise class led by three instructors and it was really hard. The whole thing was so much fun. I laughed so much. There definitely was quite a lot of innuendo going on in this exercise class, but that is Virgin Voyages for you. Virgin Voyages are a strict adult only cruise line at the moment they do have plans to introduce family ships in the future but for right now they're a very adult cruise line and you have to expect things like innuendo the instructors will be doing all kinds of things with the shake weights and it was so funny I think I got a free kind of ab workout just from laughing so much in that class virgin voyages are all about the exercise and there's a lot of exercise classes happening on board the gym area is absolutely huge and even around the rest of the ship you'll find things like pull-up bars, you'll find boxing rings, all kinds of exercise related stuff. One thing I really like is that the running track on Scarlet Lady is up and above where everybody else is walking. There's not a lot more annoying than people trying to run, walk and stand all in the same space, but that's not a problem on this cruise. If you like running, you can get up there and you can run. I'm staying on the walking bit, but you can run. <laughs> After our muster drill, we headed up to the top deck for a free glass of something bubbly. The sun was shining, which was a miracle, and the pool deck was full of people, everyone trying to get some of that sunshine. Virgin call their balconies sea terraces, their passengers sailors, their crews a voyage, their travel agents first mates. It kind of is like learning a new language to go on a Virgin Voyages cruise, but you do get used to it. Our crew sailed from Portsmouth on the south coast of England, round and round and round in circles, and then back to Portsmouth in the south coast of England. The cruise was at 65% capacity due to COVID and social distancing, and normally the ship holds around 2,700 passengers. The main pool caused a lot of controversy when we first visited. Admittedly, the pool does look much better in the sunshine than it did when we visited before, but it still is an incredibly small pool and I don't think there's any way of getting away from that. I saw a few people describe it as being handkerchief size and I think that's probably about right. This is the only pool on the ship. There is no inside pool, there is no aft pool, and it's only the middle section of this area that's actually a pool. You can paddle around in the bigger bit, but it's only that middle bit that's actually a swimming pool. There is a big whirlpool a little bit further on and it was so funny to sit and watch people swimming around the whirlpool. The whirlpool obviously wasn't designed for that but people do want to swim and because the main pool was so small you could almost reach from one side to the other. You couldn't swim in the main pool so people were swimming around and around in the whirlpool which did make me laugh. The size of the pool didn't really make a difference to us because we were on a chilly UK cruise. I do think it's a strange choice for a cruise line that focuses so much on exercise because you cannot swim in this pool, but I guess the exercise doesn't extend to swimming. Plenty of other things to do. Our first dinner on board was in Razzle Dazzle and Razzle Dazzle is perhaps the most famous venue on board. It's all about vegetarian and vegan food, but there are also meat options too. It's the only cruise I've ever been on where cookies were an actual dessert on the menu. To look at the menus in Razzle Dazzle and any restaurant, you scan a QR code with your phone and all of the menus come up. They do have paper menus for you if you don't have or can't use your phone, but I will say Virgin are a very tech focused cruise line and I think you would miss out on quite a few things if you didn't use the technology. Even in the cabins, the curtains, the lights, the everything is controlled by a tablet. So it is very tech focused. I personally thought it was really cool to be sat in bed and be able to close the curtains, turn the lights on, do whatever I want from the tablet. But I know that not everybody likes that. 
You could see all of the menus in the app before you even got to the restaurant. So I had normally had a look before I went and worked out what I wanted. If it was vegetarian, if it was vegan, if it was gluten-free, it was clearly marked on there. If you are vegan or vegetarian or gluten-free, I think you're gonna have a lot more options on here than you would on most other American cruise lines. Anytime you sat down in any restaurant, the first thing they would do pretty much was to ask you, do you have any allergies? Do you have any intolerances? The onboard app is used for a lot more than just looking at the menus. You can have a look at your onboard spend, which I always recommend that you do. And you can see a daily schedule of sorts. One thing I would say that the app misses is deck plans. I couldn't find any deck plans. Maybe they were there, but I never saw them during my cruise. And I rely on the deck plans quite a lot to work out where I was. I think that's probably an easy addition for Virgin and something they can add quite easily. So fingers crossed they do that. Normally on a cruise, I will go in the app to see where I am on the deck plan and where the nearest toilets are normally. While we're on the subject of toilets, Virgin managed to do something that no other cruise line that I know of has ever done, and they changed the toilet. It still has the same function, but it's just got a bigger seat. The bathroom that we had in our cabin was really quite small. I think it's the smallest bathroom I've ever had on a cruise ship. It was functional though, it was clean and it did work. I think I am a bit spoiled. The last cruise ship I was on was the Celebrity Silhouette and the bathroom was at least double the size, but it was fine, it was okay. You don't spend too much time in the bathroom. The actual shower was amazing. The waterfall shower head was so good and the shower was a decent space. I'm not convinced that the shower door actually works because the towels I put in the main room were totally soaked and everybody I spoke to on the ship said that they managed to flood. The bathroom too so hopefully they'll fix that it's probably not a tricky one just to put a new seal on it or something i did worry about how this bathroom would work for the larger cruiser when you come out of the shower and the door swings you almost have to stand on the toilet in order to get around the door but my friend tristan describes himself as a fluffy cruiser and he has said that that bathroom is fluffy cruiser approved so there you go when you go to the public toilets on the ship, I found two different types. One I described as the black hole toilets because they would be really long with the toilet at the end and all of the walls would be black. And the other ones I would describe as crisp packet toilets because it was like being inside a crisp packet. Your Britishism of the week is crisps, a crisp packet. What you guys in the US call potato chips, we call them crisps. They always come in individual packets like this, normally around 25 grams. And salt and vinegar is absolutely the best flavor of crisps, hands down. We also ate in a restaurant called Gumbay and a Mexican restaurant. Gumbay is a Korean barbecue restaurant where they cook the food on the table in front of you. If this was any other cruise line, this would definitely be a specialty restaurant, but it's all included in the cruise fare. We did make a terrible mess with all of this food, but it was very, very yummy. And the Mexican restaurant was really nice too. I'm happy to say that Virgin have taken on a lot of the feedback that was given to them after our first visit. This is the bed in our cabin and the idea behind this bed is that the cabin converts to be a sofa or a couch during the day and then back to a bed at night. It's definitely a clever bit of kit but I always thought that I would probably just keep it as a bed. I don't need it as a sofa, I rarely socialise with people in my cabin and even if I did, the fact that the bed was there, that wouldn't really bother me. The cabin is a pretty good space so I didn't feel the need ever to get the bed out of the way. When we arrived, our cabin was in bed mode and this is one of the things that Virgin have changed. Previously, they were starting in sofa mode and I think some people just got confused by that. You can still have it changed to be a sofa at any time, but I think most people will probably just leave it as a bed. As a bed, it was very comfortable. You would never know that it was this magic converting bed, so. I slept very well, I had a couple of afternoon naps, which I probably wouldn't have been able to have if I had it as a sofa, so. I need it as a bed. One thing that hasn't changed in the cabin that I didn't like before and I still don't like is the amount of storage space. In the corner, there's a place for hanging your clothes and there are seven shelves, lots of which are taken up by towels, the safe, life jackets and the hairdryer. Realistically, if you were two people sharing this cabin, you'd probably have a bit of hanging space per person and three shelves. I do pack very light and for the weekend, this wasn't a problem at all. But if you were gonna do a longer cruise on board, you probably would wanna bring some packing cubes, bring maybe one of those hanging things that has shelves on it. I cruised recently on the Morella Explorer. I had an inside cabin and that inside cabin had two double wardrobes and 16 drawers. I was only on that cruise for three days, so I could pretty much put one item in each drawer. Whenever I'm taking pictures or filming a ship tour, I like to put things away, but the 
desk here looks really messy because they're just it, there's no desk drawers. There's nowhere to put all of your chargers and your sunglasses and all of that stuff that you just accumulate on a cruise. There are a lot of plug sockets in this cabin, more than I've ever had in any cabin on a cruise before. And there are also lots of USBs, which is brilliant. I just charge my phone with the USB. On my website, I have a huge searchable table that has all of the mainstream cruise ships and which adapters you will need for the sockets in the cabins. It might be an idea just to favorite that page because I know you and me are always looking for which adapters do I need for this cabin? Well, I've I found out for you. Under the desk, there is a mini bar and a time to play kit that you can buy for $30. It contains a few adult toys. Normally in the mini bar, you do not get anything like this. I absolutely loved the hammock on our balcony. I have to admit, I totally thought that that would just be a gimmick before I came on board, but I climbed in to take a photo and I would stay there for an hour just swinging. It was so comfortable. Virgin Voyages cruises include soft drinks as standard and you'd normally get the kind of fountain soda. I did find one lounge on board though called the Sip Lounge where they would just give you a can of Coke Zero. So I would often get one as I was walking back to my cabin and go sit in my hammock with my Coke Zero. The sun even sometimes came out and it was really nice. Make sure you move the other chairs and the table out the way though because I did cut my leg banging into the chair but that's, that's on me being too enthusiastic. After I shared my initial review, I had a lot of comments about the seating in the public areas. There definitely are some seats around with strange designs, some that were very low to the ground, some were made of strange materials, and there were some where you full on have to climb to get onto the seat. There were a lot more practical seats around too though. A lot of the ship had quite an industrial design, especially outside, but I think that's quite trendy at the moment and it does go with Scarlet Lady's Battleship Grey. She certainly looks different from other cruise ships and that's what they were going for. I did manage to try out the huge net that Virgin Voyages have on board. It was really tricky to get into and off of because you kind of have to crawl or try and balance your feet on the ropes, which I did manage to do. It is a long way down, but I was feeling confident with my drink in hand and I just didn't look down. I found out later that there is a deck further down so people would have been underneath the net and I was wearing a dress, but I'm glad I didn't think about that at the time. We spent quite a lot of time in the draft beer house, the dock house and the sip lounge. The entertainment on board Scarlet Lady was different from that of a normal cruise. We would be sat kind of enjoying a drink in the dock house and all of a sudden some pop-up entertainment would arrive. It would be something like this where the crew members were just waving around umbrellas. I thought that opening umbrellas inside was unlucky but clearly Virgin Voyages didn't think that. When it came to the daily schedule, there was more happening on board than I thought there would be. I had heard people say who were on earlier cruises that there was nothing to do in the day. And it may be that those people didn't know what was happening because we didn't have the paper schedule in our rooms and the app was, it was okay, but it wasn't the best. You may just never know what is happening. A lot of the entertainment on board didn't have a fixed place and a fixed time. So things would kind of just happen. Having said that though, we did find the usual things. We did find trivia. We did find game shows. You're not going to be bored on the cruise. I mean, we barely had time between meals. We were constantly eating. Virgin really made it so that there's a lot of secret things on board. A lot of the venues would have kind of secretive names or the things on the daily schedule. It would be like a bit of a riddle, which is all well and good, but it did mean that I didn't find things until the last night of the cruise. I'm pretty sure that there's some bars that I never found on this cruise because they were so secret. One thing I did miss is that there was never really any live music around the ship. Normally in a cruise, you'll have somebody with a guitar or a piano just playing music in the atrium, doing kind of cover songs, but we never really saw any live music like that. Another thing that's pretty different from the other cruise lines is the main entertainment. We watched a show called Dual Reality, which was an incredible, literally death-defying display of acrobatics and dancing. They would have people swinging around from chains on their necks, jumping on these big bouncy boards, everything. It was definitely the kind of entertainment that had you sat on the edge of your seat. And I'm pretty sure that they have made a change to this since I first watched it. The show is designed so that there's a red team and a blue team and they battle it out in a kind of Romeo and Juliet style. At the end, spoiler alert, they do take off their red and blue colors. And when I originally saw the show, they were just in their underwear. When I shared the pictures, I had a lot of comments that said, oh my goodness, these people are naked. They weren't, but they did look a bit naked. When I watched it this time, everybody had kind of black vests on and shorts. So maybe they've toned that down a little bit and decided that the dancers 
can keep a few more clothes on. Scarlet Lady doesn't have a traditional theatre on board and Dual Reality really is the show for Scarlet Lady. Because they don't have a traditional theatre, they don't have the kind of traditional theatre team of singers and dancers that put on a show every evening. I quite like my routine of going to dinner and then going to the theatre and I did miss that in the evenings but I, that is quite a traditional cruiser thing and maybe I'm just too set in my cruising routine. In the evening, we would sit out here on the promenade deck. There are loads of comfy seats and I'm so glad that Scarlet Lady makes use of the promenade deck. Lots of modern cruise ships have just lost the promenade deck completely and although this one was blocked by lifeboats a lot of the way around, it does go all the way around. There's a pizza restaurant here which is open 24-7 and the pizzas are really good. The pizzas are made freshly to order and you can sit inside or outside on the promenade deck. The entertainment on Scarlet Lady does go on quite late. It does go on until the early hours in the morning. So being able to grab a pizza I think is a great idea. If you're somebody who does like to drink a lot, a Virgin Voyages cruise may not be for you. Virgin don't have any alcoholic drinks packages, which means that you're just paying as you go. For a cocktail, you're looking at between around $13 to $15. For a beer, $7 or $8. And for something like a spirit in a mixer, probably around $10. So if you do drink a lot, that cost could add up pretty fast. This area at the back is one of my favourite spaces and the ship is heading over to Miami next and I can just imagine how good this will be in the Miami sunshine. Not quite the same setting out of Portsmouth in the UK but it's still a really nice space. It definitely felt as though there was a lot of outside space on this ship. There's the main pool area, then there's the whirlpool area, there's kind of a sun deck, there's seating on the sides of the promenade deck and at the back there's this one area in the middle and one at the top. Virgin Voyages were always very firm on the idea that they don't have a buffet and technically that is true but they do have a space that takes the place of a buffet and when you were walking around the ship I would always hear people say you know what time should we meet in the buffet? So sorry Virgin Voyages but it, it kind of still is the buffet. The difference between Scarlet Lady's buffet or galley as it's called and a normal cruise ship buffet is that all of the food is just made when you order it. You do order most stuff with the waiters at the minute and you scan the menus on your phone. There are a few things that you can go up and grab and there are self-serve soda machines and you can get as much soda for free whenever you want. It's kind of like a food hall with lots of different sections that specialize in different things. My personal recommendation would be to get the avocado tacos from the taco section and to get the breakfast pancakes. All really good. Because everybody on board was vaccinated and tested, it was almost like COVID-19 didn't exist and it was amazing. It was the first kind of thing I've done since the pandemic where it didn't feel like it was a pandemic. The passengers on board don't have to wear masks, but the crew do. There weren't really any rules about how many people you can have in a lift or certain things you shouldn't touch. It was pretty much business as usual. Virgin Voyages have completely got rid of dress codes, which is something I really like. They do have Scarlet Night, where guests are encouraged to wear red, but you don't have to, and if you don't want to, that doesn't matter at all. You can wear whatever you want on a Virgin cruise, within reason. Kind of. If I could give Virgin Voyages one piece of advice that would massively improve the cruise experience and probably doesn't really cost much money, that would be to add maps, to add maps by the stairs, to add maps all over the ship. On most cruise lines you'll find a kind of side on map so that you can see this is where you are and this is where you want to go. They didn't have any maps like this on this ship and I realised on this cruise how much I rely on those maps. Also because the app didn't have any deck plans I think I wasted quite a lot of time just being lost. There was one part of the ship that I found easier to navigate than I normally would on a cruise. When you come to the cabins you'll have the A side and then you'll have the Z or Z side and normally when I get to the top of the stairs I'm trying to look at the numbers and work out oh is it even side or odd side where am I I don't know but coming to the top of the stairs and just instantly heading for that Z made it so much easier for me. When I first visited Scarlet Lady, I was really confused. I didn't have a clue who to recommend a Virgin Voyages cruise to, and I just didn't see the match between the price and the experience. When I cruised on her this weekend, I was still confused, but I was confused in a different way. 
I would be stood on Scarlet Lady and I would be thinking, this is amazing. Why is this not what Virgin Voyages are advertising? I think the food was some of the best that I've ever had on a cruise and there was so much food. The staff were so lovely, but the things that were promoted to me about Virgin Voyages before this cruise were all kind of the gimmicky things that made no difference to my cruise. I didn't get a tattoo on my cruise, but plenty of other people did. I believe that these small tattoos that they have, kind of a book of generic tattoos, those ones start at around $150 and they can do other things. Every time I walk past the tattoo parlor, somebody was in there getting a tattoo. I don't think I'm ever gonna understand the need for the soap to be black. It got under my nails and made everything look dirty. But apart from things like that, the actual solid cruise product, I think is a good one. The cruise really wasn't that different from the other mainstream cruise lines. I know Virgin probably won't like me saying that, but if you're somebody who likes to cruise with Royal Caribbean or you like to cruise with Celebrity, you probably would like a Virgin cruise. It's not all that different. I never thought I would book a cruise on Scarlet Lady, but I'm so glad I did because I had a brilliant weekend. Another cruise that I never thought I would book, but I have, is a Disney cruise. To find out what I expect that to be like and why I decided to finally book one, watch this video next.